I think today I did a really good job of just playing my own game and just kind of taking the shots that I needed to take and, you know, trying to hit the putts that I needed to hit and, and play as safe as I needed to play. I think one big goal, especially going into tomorrow for me, is to play my own game and not worry about what the other guys are shooting. Well, I mean, as you can watch on camera, we're all four throwing different shots. I have a little bit more conservative, just keep it in the fairway consistent game. If I'm throwing the disc well, I score well versus, you know, AB, who's on the par five, ripping a nuke as hard as he can, just biting so much off. And if he has an error, he's still far enough down to make do with whatever he has. And I don't know, I don't think it really affects me that much, but I can say when I was walking up <laughs> to the T of one, I was really like realized how much smaller I am than them. <laughs> I knew AB was kind of shredding around hole 10 and 12, and I knew I was like five, six back at that point. I definitely missed a couple opportunities out there. Uh, just got a little bit nervous, but finished with a couple of decent birdies. Uh, made a solid putt on 18, kind of just walked up and tossed it in. Didn't think too much about it. Yeah, I, I feel good. Obviously, still going for the win. Uh, you never know what can happen tomorrow. It looks like it's going to be pretty windy. Podium, as always, is, is good. So just looking to probably shoot another round 10 under par, and that should uh, secure me a podium spot. I cleaned up the holes I messed up yesterday and I just made 16 putts today. It was crazy. And then, well, two missed putts. One was in the circle, one was on the easiest hole, I think, ever. I don't know what happened there, but other than that, this golf just felt easy today. I don't know. I was using the momentum and I was feeling it today. Just got to finish it tomorrow. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, happy Easter and welcome to the third and final round of the 2024 Texas State Disc Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Disc. I am Jeremy Colling, joined by Paul Uliberry, and we have basically historic performance unfolding in front of our eyes with Anthony Barella's 1106 rated second 16 round. Under. 16 under. Yeah. He is our leader by quite a few. I think he has six shots over Ezra Aderhold, who played incredibly inspired disc golf. What did he shoot 11 under yesterday? Lost by five. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if he is able to put together a round similar to what AB did yesterday. He's got a chance. He's got a great chance. Yeah. Because anything in the double digits is great, but if you go 15 under, it could be really interesting towards the end. We'll see what happens, obviously. Gannon Burr, eight back of the lead. Just is doing that thing that we were used to seeing last year with Calvin, how he's just always in it. Yeah. And he just Consistent doesn't look like golf, he's playing yeah. his best disc golf, yet he's just there. Gives himself chance after chance. And Mason Ford, incredibly consistent as well. He also didn't have his best stuff yesterday, but his first round was good enough. His second round was good enough. He is still in fourth place with a good chance to have a podium finish today with a good performance. Yeah, winds are up today as well. It's not gonna be so calm. It's gonna be gusty, uh, upwards of 20, 25 miles an hour, hole one, par four, 740, dog leg left, mandatory on the left, and then OB that wraps all the way around the entire fairway. Uh, right to left crosswind. So really tough for the Anheusers. Curious to see what these guys pick as their shot to open the final round of this tournament. First on the box from Scottsdale, Arizona, representing Discraft and Grip Equipment, please welcome Anthony Barilla. I love what Anthony said yesterday in his post-round interview talking about, uh, I think Nate Perkins was asking him, was it harder to get the birdies as you got more? You started to build up pressure, getting closer and closer to that great, great round. And he said, actually, the more birdies I got, the easier it felt. And you like to be able to reverse that pressure and change the narrative. This thing is overstable. He had a problem with it yesterday, almost hitting that mandatory, but catches the one guardian. I don't know if that saved him or not. Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know what AB is going to be left with because he's going to be tight to that mandatory tree, and I don't know if his angle is going to be decent or not. At what point is Ezra just going to be too big? Because people get too big. Three, four, five years ago? I don't know. One of the two. <laughs> Look at this spike eyes are out around. I like this play a lot. It's going to find the middle of the fairway. That's the easy way Yoinks. Yeah, that's great. What a shot. Please welcome Danny Burr. 
watch out there. <laughs> Couple of nine unders in a row. And both rounds just probably leaving three or four somewhat easy for his standard strokes on the course. So see if he's able to clean that up today. That's a great tee shot. It is. I'm surprised they weren't going with the Heiser. Pushing all the way over there kind of takes all the OB out of play. Ezra made it look easy, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Please welcome Mason I've got a decent relationship with Mason. I really like him a lot. But I got to say, sometimes just with those gla glasses combo, he just kind of looks like a 1950 milk salesman. I don't know what it is about it, but he's so good at disc golf that I, <laughs> no offense at all intended. <laughs> just He could sell the crap out of some milk. <laughs> AB from the Awkward Lad. This looks pretty good. If it gets a skip, he might. Oh, wow. What a shot. Oh. Yes. That is so difficult to do from back there with that low ceiling. Gorgeous throw. And he's right back on track, huh? Inside, flipping up. Needs to sit. Pushing that left side. Yeah, the, the weeds over there are pretty sticky. That will be inside the circle look. Or maybe just outside? I think it might be just outside. It's on the edge, at least. Ezra after the big hyzer. This comes up short. Leaving a little bit more on the plate than he desired. He likes that stepper. It'd be nice to knock one down early. Sure. Get the momentum. This is overstable, obviously. And yeah. also short. Yeah, that low ceiling approach on this hole really makes the approach... Very difficult, but I like it a lot. Yeah, this is a great hole. Ah. And just like that, six strokes will become seven. And Gannon, good putt to start it off. Not quite knocking down all the looks he had yesterday that one right into the crate the milk crate the it's yeah it, that was a bad one it's a bad one and the milk koozie yeah it, it wasn't good but i'm gonna leave it alone after this hole so don't worry about it. it's not gonna keep recurring Pars for Ezra and Mason and a great birdie save or we'll call it for a b from out of position I mean, we got to start thinking about the runs because AB had, he birdied five in a row and then he went seven through 14 and then he went 16 through now. So he's on his fourth or yeah, fourth straight birdie now going back to last round. This course has been producing big runs of birdies. On to hole two, par three, 360 feet protected with bunkers on either side of the green. There is also an out of bounds Area on the left, if you hit one of these trees here, but I don't think these guys are going to challenge those obstacles. It's looking pretty good. Wow, what a start. Statement. Makes it look easy. No putting necessary. I mean, if this is going to be the kind of day that AB is going to have, this is going to be over quick. I like the width and height. He has found the bunker on the right side of the green both rounds so far. And I think he did it yesterday as well. But this time he makes the adjustment and is parked. This is looking really good as well. Oh, wow. gets a little go. scoot out of the bunker area. He's lucky to not find sand there, Paul, because if you hit that sand, your, your disc is just 
Done. No more movement. Oh, this is heavy on the hyzer. Hopefully it's short enough. Yep, can be down the hill, probably outside C1 by a good bit. Off the top, a couple of missed C2 putts early for Mason. As we're on the board, a couple other tap-ins coming up. Yeah, we said starting the week, my prediction was 30 under was going to win. That's going to be blown out of the water here. Well, yeah, AB is at 28. Yes. And we're through two holes. Um, and if he shoots, if he shoots two under for the rest of the round, that'd be awful for him. <laughs> yeah, it would be, but it might be enough to take the exactly. win still. I mean, we got Gannon at 20, Ezra at 21. We did kind of say that if AB just weren't here this week, like he had to go back to ASU yeah. and finish up classes or something, that maybe 30 under would be the winning mm -hmm. score. So it's maybe that, like that. that is the new race for second place, perhaps. Right. But I mean, obviously, the, the tournament's far from over, but big lead so far. Hole three is a par four, 870 feet. We have a bit of a tailwind today, so a favorable wind for this big long par four have to avoid going left on your approach onto this sloped green big tee shot though just slightly low ceiling is the only thing you have to worry about off the tee maybe just kind of takes that ceiling out of play just going big hyzer so effortless and that's all the way to the crest. That's going to be 360, maybe 350 to the pin from there. He like did not throw that, it mm. seemed like. Again. Didn't look like he threw it yeah, very no. hard either. Yep. Poor little Mason on this card. <laughs> <laughs> He's just watching this guy's, these little three-step run-ups. Has to work at like 110% efficiency <laughs> yeah. just to keep with. But the thing is, is he does. Like, yeah, that's what course. he does. He is an energizer bunny of efficiency. He just keeps on bringing it. And he just keeps throwing and throwing. Buttery, buttery shots. And that is going to be in the 450 range. Is he just laying up here? I, yeah, I mean, maybe more than 450. It's it's quite a ways back from here. Doesn't look like a layup. No, he's got the distance to get there for sure. And that's there. a heck of an effort. That's a great throw from back there. Cannon went a little wide yesterday. That looks better. Yeah, it looks wide to me again. Scoot. Oh. It's better. It's, yeah, it's better. A oh, great shot. Yeah, count that as a birdie. Ezra. A little closer. Can they just make like the uh, the cuff of the sleeve just a little bit wider? Right, at, just at the base of it. I mean, my point was, eventually he's going to get so big, like those bodybuilders can't like see you behind him. <laughs> and then how is he going to throw? How is he going to like turn to throw? <laughs> I'm worried. I, me too. <laughs> I'm thinking about his career. Oh, here's the first, first misfire. Oh, that's goodness. Not, uh, it's circle's edge, but that's not close. I mean, that's near... 99 percentile for him getting up and down from there with mm -hmm. a tailwind surprised to see him throw it that low almost makes up for it with the putt but the tailwind just smashes it down that was a good release yes and that could have been the issue with the approach as well the tailwind was smacking down some of those approaches and there is mason delivering the birdie Great birdie yeah I thought I was going to say milk. I told you I wasn't going to make another reference to it. Gannon with the perfect start. I think Gannon 
If he goes 18 under, he might have a chance. He's on pace for a little 18 piece. I think if Ezra goes 18 under. 15 <laughs> under, he might have a chance. But they both just drew one stroke closer. Matteo with his fake follow through ends up just getting around the last tree that he needs to miss. Come on, give us a little hop. You know the hop's coming. Give us that hop, baby. Load it up. Boing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine hopping it in there and then not running it in? No. That no. would just be so weird to see that. It'd be like a, somebody throwing and then follow throwing like three, three seconds later. <laughs> That's like what he did yesterday. <laughs> Hole four, par three, 405. That doesn't matter. The distance doesn't matter. What matters is this gap right here. Right. Heiser through this gap without hitting the limbs left. It's a tricky one, man. I mean, we've seen a lot of people messing up on this hole. This is a two stroke swing. This is one that these guys are looking. Put the pressure on, put something in the circle. I hope they can find a mess up there from our leader. One of the only big time guaranteed two stroke swings, like right off the bat. With a difficult yeah, shot. Yeah, for sure. And that's a great start there for Gannon. That's... This one comes to mind. Hole 18 comes to mind. Hole mm -hmm. 6 comes to mind. Yep. It's a good opportunity for it. Ezra. Hurry. Gets yeah. Gets through the branches, and that's there. That's a great shot. That'll be more than likely a... Third birdie in a row for Ez. That was easy. Doesn't it look like he throws it about like two percent? I look. I just. That's what I'm saying. He's just so efficient with his form. Oh come on, <laughs> come on! <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that was good. Big moment here for AB. Yeah, Get back of the box. Those tree. Yeah. Okay. And I think I think he can. Oh well. Okay. So his birdies are yeah. just going to all be tappins. <laughs> that's I that's really, an important shot though. Honestly, for right sure. There. Big time. The rest of the card if all in balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden, four. That's a four is a different story than six. Oh no doubt. That lead gets squashed so quick with a with a big bogey here with everyone else in the circle looking for their birdies. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, you can't have that two days in a row. I mean, it's, that's, that's the dice you roll, you know? really is. I mean, this thing is coming in so fast. Yeah. I, I honestly. There's, I mean, I don't want to play on a target that that's not going to have a chance to spit out back at you. You know what I mean? I don't like when it's uh, Ezra lines this up. This is 20 feet. Because he throws it hard, too. Yep. When there's a headwind, I hate seeing spit outs. But when it's calm like this, yeah, and yeah. you pop it in and it comes out, it's typically because it was too hard. One of the reasons I don't like the argument to make the basket smaller, it, putting into a headwind, especially if it's like slightly uphill, don't so. you could be 10 feet away and just have no chance, you know? It's like, what do you even do at that point? But Gannon still essentially is playing perfect. Yeah. Great start for him, but I wonder if the spit out will shake his confidence moving forward, considering. It's the second spit out we've seen from him in the last two rounds. Hole five, par three, 351 feet. 
There is two options here, the right side and the left side. Both are equally pretty decent. The issue is trying to get the disc just over the ridge of that hill, but then not too far because if you skip long, you can find yourself going all the way down the bottom of the hill and going out of bounds. You haven't seen anyone, not many people are going down there because they're so scared to do it. That a lot of people end up coming up about 35 feet short. I think this guy right here hit the cage yesterday. This looks good again. Looks yeah. good again. Yeah. yeah. Scary little putt, though. You know, it is scary, but one thing I like to tell people on here is these are the these guys are playing the best out of anybody in the tournament. So when we call 20 footers, 25 footers formalities, it's because these guys They're are locked dying. in. If you watch the field play, mm -hmm. you're going to see people missing putts here and there from that range, but they're not locked in. Yeah, I was actually, it's funny you say that as Mason throws a forehand, about 40 short, I'll say. As I was playing that last hole and we were talking about the, the danger is those trees, we haven't seen anyone really find that problem as Anthony throws it just perfect. Uh, we haven't seen anyone throw into those trees but most of the field is having that issue. It's just these right. guys, you're seeing the best players in the right. tournament who have figured out how to not bring those trees into play. Right. They're just, everything's coming, coming out exactly where they want. But they're thinking about the same thing we're thinking about. They're just not making the mistake. This is poor. Oh my gosh. That uses every inch of oh, the fairway. But the poof. But the poofer. Don't forget about the poof. Don't forget about the poof. Can't poof here. And Mason. He is running it. Sit. Oh! Sit. Wow, what a bid. Off the edge, left side, so close. Oh, what a bid. A great way to contest that long downhill putt. Yeah, I don't think his confidence is shaken. No, nope. you got to just keep putting them in. I mean, just here's the thing. If there. you told me, hey, you'll make all these putts and you'll have a spit out around, guess what I'm doing? Slinging I'm daddy. Slinging. Call me Spider-Man. Ezra taking his time. Call it four in a row. Wow. Great putt. Well played hole. Yeah, on the stripe, man. That's a confident putt right there. And look at this guy. Just parking him. Uh, that one was technically not in bullseye. It might or was well it? Be. Yeah. Might as well be. <laughs> no, it, it, it may have been, but I, I mean, that's crazy. The four birdies he's had, the average distance on the putt is less than 10 feet so far. Incredible. It's another way to do it, though, for Gannon. If you put it one inch above the rim, really tough time coming back to you. Down I feel down. like a lot of the putts that we see him make are generally just over the rim. That's yeah. kind of like, that's kind of how he putts. This hole has been the hardest throughout the event. Let's see if it remains the most difficult. Yeah, it still is the most difficult hole on the course, a 4.3 average. And that's because of the tee shot. I mean, low ceiling, yep. very tight from left to right, out of bounds left, it comes into play so fast. Probably only about 270 feet straight and you're out of bounds. It's just surprising how difficult hole 18 is for most people. Into the headwind every single round that this hole is playing more difficult, but the thing is, you're either going to take a 2, 3, or 4 in 18. You can take a double bogey here quick. Yeah, easily. Saw it a few times. Ezra decided to go two-piece. Love this. Out wide, challenging the wide OB line. Oh! oh. See what I'm saying? God, it that really cuts quick. back. It comes in quick. I love this shot, but man, in the end, it's great, but certainly closer than, than he'd like for comfort. Surprising to me that these all these guys are going with the sidearm. It's a very tough sidearm to get the distance because of uh, how pinched off it is. This is awesome. And there's also OB on the right side. Mm -hmm. And that can find, if you don't get it flattened out, you can find that OB right and be in trouble. So far, no one has made any ground on AB. Five holes in. And everybody's playing good. Yeah, that's just, this man is locked in on this course. 
super hard to beat. Took second place last year to Calvin. This year he's really dialed in the putt. So much control, backhand, putter, forehand, everything. It just looks so controlled, so poised. Mason not happy with that one, but he will be to find it in bounds. Yeah, for most players, two under through five is a decent start, and it just feels like he's getting, you know, lost. Molly whopped, <laughs> as I like to say. Molly whopped. I've never, yeah, sure. You never heard that? Mm mm. Huh. That's, that could be a good disc. <laughs> Cannon with the forehand. He's done very well in this hole so far. I believe he is two under in the first two. This time it's going to take a big putt. Obstructed downhill to an elevated basket with danger behind. So a lot of things coming up for Gannon. As we're at such a great angle, he can actually see the basket on the right side of the rough, keeps the sidearm wide, which is what you got to do, and bullseye. Great touch. Run this one back here. Around the obstacle tree. Very good. Whoa. A little reverse spin. Well, A, B, C is what he needs to do. Just keep this one wide. Looks like he's going with Raptor. Yes, sir. Oh, that's right side. Paul, oh. that could find OB. And it does. Oh, no. It just was never wide enough. I don't, need, I don't know if that stays in bounds if it doesn't hit that. It probably doesn't stay in bounds, but it probably gets to circle's edge. Yeah, sure. There, yep. But man, that's a that's a big mistake. This needs to sit. Oh, I wonder if that's the first OB for Anthony. I don't really know what he did first round, but and he lays it up. Not surprised from that distance, but we are going to see a blemish here from Anthony Brella, and Ezra's going to make up two shots on him just like that. And Gannon sit. Yeah, Gannon gives it a run. But yeah, I mean, if that penetrates just another foot or two behind that brush line, I mean, he might be having to throw a trick shot from eight feet away. Look oh at my. Let's go, Mason. He popped that. Yeah, you can't say he skimmed that one. That was just a full send. Mm hmm. So bogey for Anthony. He did have two bogeys round one on holes six and nine. And I'm guessing that those came without a bounds, but certainly the first blemish we've seen from him in quite some time. I mean, if Mason misses that, that thing is so <laughs> far away. I don't think he was missing that. Mm -hmm. I think he determined I'm going to make this putt and then just sent it. Love it. little dinker here par 3 294 put it on the left side and drift it in with a putter that's what these guys are going to be doing you can't go mid-range but i think these guys are so dialed they're going to tone it back and put a little putter put the brakes on miss a couple limbs one guardian in your way as we're going with a zone he likes putting these over stable discs on lots of anheuser it's the only thing that flies like a true putter for him. Very good. You ever tried throwing with a python for an arm? 
No. You think you could throw a putter without it being so super overstable? No. No. It would never make any sense for it to be understable. <laughs> it's a python. Great shot there from Gannon. Gannon bases it. Mason just Ooh, a little wildly off, off his yeah. timing. Early release. Didn't look like he put the same routine together before throwing that one. Yep. Uh, this looks mighty fine. And once again, AB just refuses to give himself more than 12 feet for these birdie looks. Incredible driving. Just the one mistake really on the OB shot on six. And I really think that his approach on three was destroyed by the wind. I don't think that he just threw a completely errant shot. And so far, he's been throwing the disc exactly as he needs to. Minus one throw. Ezra, five in a row. This is for six. And another great delivery. He is doing what he needs to do to get back into this thing. Yes, he is. I mean, that is as good as they make him. This will still keep Anthony four shots above Ezra. And we have officially gotten to 30 under again. Wow. It's the second time he's been there, but. Yeah. Maybe that's a pretty good prediction, huh? Yeah, I think it's, I think it'll win. I th seven. Yeah, I think, I think 30 will be fine <laughs> <laughs> at this rate with Ezra birding the last six holes. No, I, th I think. It's in trouble. Yeah, that number needs to get a lot lower. I don't know how low though. I mean, these guys are putting together some great rounds. I want one of these guys to just go after this hole. Somebody needs to get this hole. Uh, there are three guys on this card that I think can give themselves inside yes. 80 feet with two big throws, if not Controlled closer. Controlled throws. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you've seen it. I mean, it's 1,161 feet. The only thing you probably can't see is the OB on the left and right side of the fairway, but it's pretty wide open. I mean, the only thing that you're really thinking about is where is the second shot going to be from and how I'm going to throw it. Is it going to be Anheuser or is it going to be Heiser? Oh, I like this one. Yeah, Ezra put a move on this thing. Is it going to be on the green? Not quite past it. It's a great shot. That's all of 500. Flat. Coming back, nothing wrong with this one. Ooh, that might be past Ezra. Yeah, Gannon oh. has so much distance. It's He's wildly uh, underrated with the distance. Maybe he's got his more stable disc out, so I'm thinking he's not going to go with the... Oh, he did. He did, Germ. He went with the full... Yeah, that's called the full treatment. And we just prepared Josh. We told him, hey, man, go as far as you think is humanly possible. And he did. And then AB still got him turning around. And we said, Josh, you look like a fool out there. Do your job. That is so far. I mean, that's what like most of the drives look like on this course. Great drives. Yeah. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. One more of those and then a little chipper and he's all, all the way there. He goes with the hyzer. I like this play. Get yourself yep. to the left and then you have an easy, easy shot in. Yeah, that's probably inside 300 something. Yeah, 
three thirty, I'd say about what it is. Yeah, maybe, yeah, right around there. Ezra, he's looking skyward, but what kind of skyward? Oh, Heiser. Yeah, he's looking on the Heiser side. Yep. Okay, so just easy. Yeah, just dissecting the whole. The smart way to do it. Oh, he hits the tree. That's still so far down there. Oh yeah. Two hundred in maybe. Cannon's gonna put this on a little Anheuser through that gap. Oh. Okay. Just a little late on the release. Just a bit. I think he, I think he was trying. Absolutely, he was trying. Oh my goodness, he is in. Is that in C two? It's close. That's C two ish. Whoa. Yeah, I mean that. And he had another three or four feet of height that he could have put on that. Oh Ow. boy. I'm scrambling back to his feet quickly. Great shot from back there. Fifty feet for the birdie. Saw a lot of people falling like that with the sidearm. This uh, interesting, yeah. It's not like just little, here, not on this dewy. hole. No, just everywhere. Right? Uh huh. The grass was like that height. So if there's a little dew, it kind yep. of folds over. Yep. Uh oh. High. Oh, yeah, man. that's fine. Straddle putt going to be tricky, but yeah, I'd like to get it a little closer, of course. Man, Ezra did throw that hyzer far with hitting the tree. If he's got well, pitch forehand zone. OS. Is, is that zone OS? Mm hmm. It must be the most beat up one ever because when I've seen those things fly from other people, they. Yeah. They're weird. The slower you throw them, the less stable they are. The harder you throw them, the more stable they are. Which is why I'd, I never threw them. <laughs> They're just zones for me. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, well, AB for Eagle. Just laying it up. Yeah, smart. Yeah, outside circle too. But you know what I'm saying? He had a, a few more feet of height he could oh, yeah. have challenged. I think... And that wasn't his fast disc. That was like his yeah. controlled one. Crazy. Gannon, right side chains. And Mason unable to capitalize. So easy to do to push those ones when, you're, when all your weight's on your right side. Mm -hmm. You just don't practice those. The weight shift is so weird. Okay, and then back in for the par. And Mason is now falling behind most of the field. I mean, you got to pick up some of these birdies here, especially seven and eight. You're looking to go one down minimum. And he's only got two birdies in the front nine so far. So hard to maintain that position in the top four through three rounds. And yes. it, if at any point you find a lull, you have to return fire with seven or eight in a row or do mm -hmm. something incre incredible. And right now, Ezra's got seven birdies in a row. Wow. He's doing everything he can, but I mean, AB he's keeps only, birdying. Yeah. yeah, he's only made up two strokes right now, but he is That's within a lot four. for how good AB's he, playing. He totally is. He took advantage of the one yes. big window of opportunity that Anthony gave him. Especially, at, he was seven back after the first hole. Yeah. So he's made up three since then. Final hole the front nine. We've got a low ceiling right side, a little bit higher on the left side. That water area is significantly down from when, excuse me, when the drone was flying over. I think we'll see most of the shots go right and maybe one shot go left or maybe two. I think Anthony was going to turn over putter on the left side. I really like that play to the left. Let's see what Ezra's got. He's going over stable zone. This needs to sit. That's helpful. 
Oh, and that's extremely helpful. Yeah. Wow, what a break. Good result. I was trying to just flatten that out. Maybe a touch more Anheuser out of the hand. But it was just enough to miss the obstacles. Oh, he pulls it just a little bit. Can he beat those? Oh, wow. I just That's just elite shot shaping. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, so good. 20 feet past. It's 380 with a putter with a slightly low ceiling. Go try that in the field. And then have a friend there to laugh at you when you fail miserably. Go try that in the forest. Yeah, then go try that in the forest after you've perfected getting laughed at in the field. There's a sidearm yep. I wanted to I see. I thought we'd see him do it eventually. Yeah, very good. Very good. Angle, touch, it all of it. seems like there's no wind here, but I could have sworn there was a little wind out there. I'm surprised too. I'm looking at these can of flags and they are not moving. And that is just not this, the same course that Slow down, we were playing Mason. earlier. Okay, putting. He's yeah. safe. Just missing his line. It's just not quite the Mason Ford that got him here. This is still a good shot to get to here, though, with the back. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, he's giving himself a chance. And oh, sit. Off the top and skips a little bit long. Ezra for eight in a row. I mean, what wow. did we say he had to do from the top of the show? Wow. He, he'd have to do what AB did yesterday. And eight down the front nine is exactly what Anthony Varela did yesterday. Incredible stuff right now from Ezra. Mason back in for the par. Not a gimme by any means. Respectable front nine. Six under. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Are you yeah. kidding me? Bogey free. With the spit out. So good. I mean, that's what AB makes this. That's what he's at, right? Six? Yeah. Which is so good with a bogey. Mm -hmm. These guys are just lighting it up. Just got to make sure to focus, though. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Goes to the routine. Mm hmm. I love that about Anthony, and we're really seeing him with this very solid, comfortable routine. He's just really taking his time on each one of these putts. You know, at the end of the tournament, you hate to look back and be like, man, there was that one time I rushed that one shot. Yeah. Every single shot matters the same amount. Each stroke is one stroke. Absolutely. I mean, it, at least these guys are making them keep keeping them honest. honest. Yeah, keeping them honest. And yeah. This golf is just crazy to watch. Like nobody else in the field is doing this. It's just the lead card. Yeah, I mean it, it's 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 contagious at a certain point when you you know everyone around you is doing well. It's it's easy to, you know, if you're not doing well, you can get in, uh, discouraged by it. You can kind of shy away or get scared. I'm not saying that that's what Mason's dealing with right now, but the other three guys, um, they're just killing they're it right now. Vibing, yeah. They're vibing for sure. Well, Anthony Brell still holds all the cards right now, playing incredible disc golf. He has got a four shot lead over Ezra. I think eight right now over Gannon. We've got nine more holes before we crown our Texas State Disc Golf Champion for 2024. Come on back. It's going to be an exciting finish.